Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Ruddy and today we're going to create an e-commerce store from scratch using the full site editing in WordPress, WooCommerce and Gutenberg blocks. I will go through the entire process of installing WordPress locally, installing the necessary plugins, setting up the theme and creating a couple of pages. Throughout the process, you will see some of the bugs, drawbacks and overall possibilities. And for those of you who are wondering what is FSC, FSC represents a major shift in a way that a WordPress website can be created. It is a tool that comes with WordPress 5.9 and above, and it allows you to build fully working websites based on drag and drop blocks. It is an excellent way to make quick edits to your site without having to go through the hassle of changing code manually. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to be using Laragon in order to be able to install WordPress locally. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can try local by firewall or you can use Exam. The first thing that I want to show you is that if you are using Laragon, I did have to download the PHP version. So right click PHP version and I downgraded to 8.0.25 purely because 8.1.10 was giving me a few warnings. In order to downgrade, all you need to do is click on how to add another PHP version. It's pretty easy. You download the PHP version from the official website, and then you literally export the PHP version inside Laragon bin PHP, just like I have in here. And that's it. Now that we're done with this, let's start Apache and MySQL and let's create our new website. So right click in this case, quick app and then WordPress. I'm going to give my website a name of one plant and press OK. This is going to download WordPress. OK, this has this also generates a pretty URL, which is under one plant dot test. The extension can be changed from the Laragon settings, but I don't really mind since this is a development environment. Now let's click on the link and this will open the browser and let's quickly install WordPress. So as a default, I'm going to leave it to English United States, press next. And then for the site title, I'm going to go with one plant username. I'm going to go with root password. I'm going to keep it simple and put a password and then I'm going to confirm use a weak password in here. Let's add my email and that's pretty much it. Click install. This should take a second to install and we're good to go. Now we can log into the back end of our WordPress website. Let's click login. Let's put root and let's put password and press login. As you can see, we have the latest version of WordPress as of now, which is 6.1. I'm going to dismiss this message and see what we need to update. So here in update, if you scroll down, you will see that we're getting a team that needs an update. Uh, we don't really need this team. We can delete it, but I'm just going to update it so we don't get the notification here. And that's pretty much it. The next thing that I want to do is to turn on the debug for this website. When we're developing, we want to see any errors that we're getting uh, so we can fix them straight away. And also this is going to help with the caching of the website. So we don't have to refresh like mad, like I did in the last video. Uh, so let's go back to Laragon in this case, close this. Let's go to the root folder, navigate to the website that we just created, one plant. And I'm going to open the WP config in Visual Studio code here. Let me open it. And as you can see, I've zoomed in so everybody can see. And if you scroll down a little bit, you should see somewhere online, somewhere around line 80, 89, we have defined WP debug to false. So let's turn this to true. And as I said, this is going to help with the caching of the website. So we don't have to clear the cache of the browser. And also it's very easy to make mistakes in the JSON file that we're going to be uh, working in today mainly. And uh, this is going to help us quite a bit. When you, uh, when you finish with the development of your website, of course, turn this to false, then you should be good to go. Now let's close this and let's open the theme folder, which is located in WB content themes. And then we need to create a new one actually. So let's create a new folder in here and I'm going to call it one plant. Like so I want to open this folder in my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code in this case. And to do this, I can do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. And I can just put, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And I can just put code dot. And this is going to, this basically CDs to the folder that I'm in, one plant here inside Teams. And it opens it in Visual Studio Code. That's pretty much it. 
for the if you can't do that command don't worry all you have to do is open your code editor go to file open folder and navigate to the folder that we just created here that's pretty much it um so we can minimize this and let's jump back into wordpress and finish some of the installation if we go to the current website as of now it actually is in the index page and it's displaying some posts i want to change this and i want to make sure that our wordpress website is displaying a page instead in order to do this all we need to do is go to the dashboard click on settings reading and then instead of latest post all we need to do is change this to a static page and the static page that I want to select is the sample page that was created when we installed WordPress. So save changes. And now you go back to the website, press enter. You will see that we're getting sample page here, which is all good. Now, the next thing that I want to do is let's go to pages and let's change the sample page to home. Just so we know what it is. And save it. And I'm going to create one more page of where we can mess around, drop some blocks and style them. And I'm going to kill this page demo. Publish. And we should be good to go. Now let's go back, refresh, and we have the demo page in here, which we're going to use in a second. And the last thing that I want to do before we start developing our website is to install all the required plugins. In this case, if you go here to plugins, let's install woocommerce so add new and then woocommerce so let's press install now this should take a couple of seconds let's click activate and we need to super quickly finish the process in here so i'm going to put united kingdom for this example let's put my address In this case, I'm going to be selling home furniture and garden. So let's continue. We will be selling physical products. So I'm going to leave this ticked and then continue. Then how many products? I don't really know. No. And then continue. I'd recommended business features to my site. Let's have a look. Some of those things will be very useful. Like those three, the basics are very useful, but I'm going to remove the jetpack from here because I don't really want any of them at the moment so i'm going to remove all of them and just leave those two and then continue the last thing that we need to do is choose a team and i'm going to continue with the active team for now before we create our own team in a second and we should be good to go okay now that we have woocommerce installed i'm going to add a few products and categories and then we can continue by the way feel free to skip this step or maybe come back to it later so what i'm going to do now is under products i'm going to go to categories and create a few of them. I'm actually only going to create one category and one product, and then I'm gonna speed up the process so you don't have to go through all this. The process is the same. Under categories, all we need to do is give it a name and a slug, and then parent should be absolutely fine. And I'm gonna upload some images as well. So I'm gonna drag some images in here, and all the images I'm using come from unsplash.com and I will have the links in the description below and I'm just going to select this one of course put the old text but just to speed up the process here I'm going to skip this step and use this image add category and as you can see we now have our first category created in here now I'm going to do exactly the same for the for the rest and I'm going to speed up the process All right, now that we have a couple of categories, let's create a few products. In order to do this, go to products, add new, and then we need to give the product a name. So I'm just gonna copy and paste some of the categories in here, and I'm going to copy some dummy text, lorem ipsum, and that should do the job. For the product image, I'm gonna select the same image here and set the product image. And then for the price, I'm just gonna make it up. I'm just gonna make it up and say it's 16 pounds. And for the sale, I'm going to leave that off. And then for the product category, I'm just going to select the category that this plant is in. And that's pretty much it. Of course, if you're setting up a real shop, you need to go through all the options in here and see what you need to add. In this case, I'm going to publish this product and then create a few more and speed up the process so you don't have to watch the same thing again and again.
Okay, now that we have a couple of products created, you can go to products, all products, and you'll be able to see all of them in here with uh, their details and so on. All right, now if you go to the dashboard here and if you scroll down a little bit, you will see appearance. If we click on appearance, teams, you will see that these are the team options that we have. Now let's create all team. So I'm going to close absolutely everything that we don't need in here. Uh, we have that. Okay. Open Visual Studio Code or your favorite editor and open the team folder that we created early in this tutorial here in WP Content Teams. And I called it One Plant. As you can see, it's currently empty and we need to start creating some of the folders and files required. If you jump back to Visual Studio Code inside here, we can start with the first folder and this is going to be the assets folder. Inside the assets folder is where you can put things such as the fonts, images, and if you have any additional CSS or JavaScript files, you can also put them in here. Later on, I'm going to be uh, downloading the fonts as we need them. And if we need any images, I'll put them inside here. The next folder that we need is called parts. And this folder is going to contain some of the parts of our website, such as the header, or the footer. We can leave them in here later on when we develop them. And the next folder that we need is the styles. So the styles folder is essentially where we're going to be creating one theme for this tutorial. But later on, I'm going to show you how you can change the styles of the current theme that we made. So for example, you might want to change the colors of the theme. You might want to change the fonts. I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then you'll be able to select which style you want. And then these styles are going to go in this folder here. The next folder that we need is the templates folder. And inside the templates folder is basically all of the pages that WordPress is using. For example, we have the 404 page, which is going to be HTML. This is important. We're not using PHP anymore in here. It's HTML. Then let's create another file inside the templates folder is going to be called archive.html. And the archive is essentially displays posts, categories, stacks, and order archives. Then we need the index. Index.html, that needs to be inside, by the way. Index.html displays posts. Then we need the page.html. And the page.html is the one that we're going to use the most today, which is displays a single page. Then we're going to have search.html which displays search result. And last we have single.html. And this is the default template for displaying any single post or attachment. That's pretty much from the templates. WooCommerce is actually going to create a few more templates on its own. So we don't have to do them manually and we can collapse this. The next few files that we need to create are going to be functions.php. You don't actually need this file in order your team to work, but I do want to include a style sheet that we can use and further modify our team. And don't worry, the PHP code that we can write, it's going to be tiny. It's literally like two, three lines. That's it. Now, the next file that we need to create is index.php. And this index file is going to be empty. It's just required for the team, but we don't have to touch it. The next thing that we need to do is create the style. Dot CSS and this file is going to have two rows. One is going to have the description of our team, so the title, the author, the name, the URL of the team, and so on. But also, I'm going to be using this file to further style some of the stuff that we can't do in Gutenberg, so that's definitely required. So, we definitely need this. And the last file that I want to create is going to be the team.json which is probably where we're going to spend most of our time. This is how you create the full site editing themes. All the settings, colors, typography is pretty much put in here. So we're going to spend a lot of time in this file. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to do. And the last thing that I want to do is drag a screenshot of our team. So I'm going to drag it inside here, outside all of the folders. So we have screenshot.png that I've created. This screenshot is 1200 in width and 900 in height and it needs to be .png. Let's close all the files. I'm going to close all files here and let's quickly jump into style.css. Now I'm going to copy and paste a comment from the official WordPress documentation that I've modified a little bit. And also you can grab this from pretty much any team in your teams folder in here. If you go to the, for example, 2023, you can grab it from here. I'm going to open this as you can see the name, the team URI and so on. 
So grab this, paste it in your style.css and just fill some of the information, for example, the team name, the URI, the author, description, and so on. Anything that you feel like is important, fill that and save it. At this point, we should have our theme created. And if we go back to the website and refresh, you will see that we're getting our theme in here. So we have one plant and if I click on theme details, you will see that we're getting the name, the version, which is already on one2 I forgot to probably change this and so on. We get in the description and it's looking pretty cool. Let me close this. And the first thing that we need to do is activate the team. So click on activate. As you can see, we're getting an error here and that's absolutely fine. This is because we have the WP debug turned on. And also I haven't started working on my teams.json file. One thing that I wanted to show you is that if we go on the website right now and if we refresh, you will see that we're getting an error in here and we have empty template page. This is because we haven't started creating our page template. Saying this, one thing that I wanted to show you before we actually start developing our website is the theme.css. So currently this file is working, our team is picking up all of the information here. But if I was to say, let's just say we want to change the body, background color. So let's say background color and I've put it to blue. Let's save this. If I go back to the website and refresh, you will see that nothing is changing which is a little bit weird. The team is picking up the file, but it's not picking up the CSS. So what we have to do is inside functions.php, we actually need to add this file. This is gonna be the only PHP that we can write today. So let's open PHP like so. And inside here, I'm gonna paste a comment saying NQ styles. And inside here, we need to create our function. So function, let's give it a name of one plant and then underscore styles. Then open and close the curly brackets in here. And this is where we're going to put the logic. Now, let me show you what the logic is. So the logic behind this is that we need to use WP and Q in order to be able to add styles or JavaScript. And I'm going to show you the settings super quickly. So WP and Q, uh, the first setting is a string and is the handle. So the handle in here, you can reference it, is the name of the style sheet, should be unique. Then we have here the source, which is a string, as you can see the full URL of the style sheet. Then we have the, what do we have? The devs, uh, which is an array of registered style sheet handles. This style sheet depends on, and we have the version and so on. So this is where you can reference some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing right now. And let's quickly do it. So inside here, we start with WP underscore NQ underscore style. We give it the name of one plant dash style it should be unique and then i want to get this file here there is a shortcut and we can do get underscore style sheet underscore uri close it like so then this is going to be array and then the last thing that we need to do is the version so wp get theme get and then version and that's pretty much it i'm gonna do the view world wrap so you can see a little bit better here is the full line of code and the last thing that we need to do is add an action and trigger this function so add underscore action and then this action is going to be called this is very important wp underscore nq and then scripts and then we do comma and then the script that we want to nq which is called one plant underscore styles and we close technically speaking now if we go back to the website and refresh you will see that we're getting a blue color and this is because i put the body background color of blue if it was to put this to red for example save it and refresh if it doesn't refresh what you can do somebody mentioned this in the comments below control shift and r or command shift and r and then dash it refresh straight away now that we know that our style sheet is working we don't actually need this i just wanted to make sure that it's working and the last thing that I wanted to do in functions.php is to check whether this function exists. So what we can do is an if statement and inside here we can say if exclamation mark function underscore exists. And then the function that we want to check whether it exists is going to be one plant styles like so. And then we do column and then we can tap this inside and then we can do end if and then close. That's pretty much it. That should work as well. 
And now we are done with the functions.php. Let's close the functions.php as we are done and we're never going to touch this again in this tutorial. Now let's close this file and let's open the theme.json file and let's do the very basics so we can get rid of this error here. Let me refresh one more time. So if you go back to Visual Studio Code and let's focus on the theme.json. Theme.json is essentially our theme configuration. This is where we're going to be adding all of the settings for the theme styles and template parts. To start with, what we have to do is inside here, we need to start with curly bracket and everything is going to be inside here. Now working with a JSON file is not so bad, but it's going to get very messy very quickly and it's going to be a little bit hard to navigate, but I'm going to show you how we can fix that problem, kind of. So the first thing that we need to do is set up the schema and I'm going to copy and paste a URL from the official website. And this is essentially going to help us with tooltips, autocomplete and a validation in or in our code editor. What I mean by this is now if I put a comma and if I do double quotes, you will see that we are getting a lot of settings in here and this is where they come from. It's essentially this link is providing all of the tooltips and all to complete. The first thing that I want to set up, which is very, very important, is the version. If you don't set this, it's going to default to zero and your settings might not work. Probably won't work. The version as of now is two. Set this to two. The next thing that we need to do is put a comma one more time in here and put the title. Not so important, but nice to have. And I'm going to call this one one land that's it this is the very basics of all theme.json if we go back to the browser now and if we refresh you will see that we've removed all the errors and we have empty template page let me quickly walk you through the fsc super quickly and the gutenberg editor if we go to the dashboard or you can click on edit site as well but let's go to the dashboard super quickly and if you scroll down a little bit under appearance you will see the editor the editor is currently in beta as you can see Let's click on it and let's have a look around super quickly. So this is how the editor looks like. If we click on the WordPress login here, you will see that we're getting the site editor, the templates editor, which is essentially the templates that we created earlier, such as the 404 page, the archive index, the page, and so on. When we installed WooCommerce, WooCommerce actually added a couple of other templates for us, which is great. For example, product catalog, we have, we have a product search result, single product, products by category, and so on. The next thing that we can look into is the template parts. Um, and this essentially is where we're going to create in our header of our website. We're going to create in our footer. And as you can see, we have a mini card added from WooCommerce. So this is pretty much the editor. And now let's click on the templates here. And for example, let's start editing the page. So if I click on page here, you will see that we're getting a blank page, which is fine. There are a couple of things that you need to know. First of all, if you want to find the blocks under here, you can click on toggle block inserter. You can search for blocks or you can find the patterns in here. Of course, you can look through featured buttons, columns, and so on. Now, this is, this is an important one because we're going to be using this quite a lot. And then if you look at blocks, we have some of the main blocks in here. We have text, media, design, we have widgets. And if I scroll down a little bit more, you will see that we also have WooCommerce blocks that we'll be able to use later on, which is really, really good. Now, this is pretty much everything that you need to know in here. And the next thing that I wanted to show you is the list view. Now, the list view is essentially how your website is structured. So for example, if I was to add something here, it straight away added a paragraph as the full, but if I was to add a group, for example, which is a container, you will see that we're getting group. And if I was to add a paragraph in this group is where uh, you will see that the paragraph jumps in this group. And this is how we can essentially create groups, rows, columns, paragraphs, buttons, and so on. They'll be viewed in here. It would be really nice if we can actually rename uh, what the group is about, but I don't think that this is an option just yet. But hopefully in future we'll be able to rename, for example, this could be I don't know, our hero section and so on. So that's pretty much what you need to know inside here. The next thing that I wanted to show you is here on the right side is the settings. So we have the template settings, which is the page settings that uh, when we go to an individual page, you'll have a lot more settings in here. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you is the block. 
the blocks is when you select a specific block, every single block will have um, slightly different settings. For example, the container or the grid block, you have layout setting, you have justification, you have color, topography, and so on. Now, the reason I'm showing you this right now is because I want to show you how you can add a couple of more settings such as padding margin and so on. And the last thing that I almost forgot to show you is here is the styles. We don't currently have any styles, but essentially we're later on in this tutorial, we're going to create a different style of our team, which you will be able to select from here. For example, we can change the colors of the team. We can change the fonts and so on. Let's remove all of this. First thing that we need to do in order or pages to display some text is to add a block. So the block that I'm looking for is inside blocks and it's good for post. What you can do is do slash and then post, and then we need post content. Now this is going to pull all the content from the actual page. We're currently editing the edit page. So this is going to be the template for the edit page. So what that means is if I save now, and if I go back to the website, earlier we didn't have anything on the website, but now we're getting the content and this is the content from the actual page. So if I was to go to the demo page that we created earlier, we, we're not going to get anything. And this is because on the demo page, we don't actually have any text. But if I click edit page, you will see that we have the title of, and let's say the world, and we can put this as an H1, for example, and save it. So this, if I go back to the website one more time, put demo on. Now we are having the content of the page rendered in here. And this is because we are editing the page from the actual templates here. We are editing the page in here. And as you can see, we're getting a little blue dot in here. And that symbolizes that we've edited the page and it's not reflecting the current one inside here because it's empty now. But later on, I can literally copy the code, copy the code from this page and then paste it in here and just save it as a page where somebody will be able to download your theme and it's just going to work if that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing to start with, but uh, it will make sense as we go along. Now that we have a very basic page in here, I'm actually going to leave it as it is, save this and close pretty much everything that we don't need. And I'm only going to focus on the demo page in here. So what I'm going to do in here is create different types of headings. Heading one. And I'm going to duplicate this uh, five times. So control shift and D or command shift and D one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five and heading six. Of course, we need to change them because they're all H1 currently. So what I'm going to do is change these to two, three, four, five and six. Perfect. If I save this super quickly, let's go back. You will see that we're getting the headings and we can also type something as a paragraph. This is a, this is a normal paragraph. Maybe we can uh, look into the colors. If you do slash, let's put another heading. And then this is going to be an H1. So maybe we can look into the colors. Maybe we can look into some of the blocks. So I'm going to duplicate this and just put blocks. For the blocks, maybe we can start simple and just add a button like so. Save this, update and refresh. All right, now we have a couple of things that we can start looking into. All right, now let's close pretty much everything. Make sure that you have the demo page open in here just so we can see the changes that we're going to be making and also have, have the actual website with the demo page open on the top again so we can see the changes. Let's jump back into the code editor and open theme.json. That's what we're going to be focusing on now. So the next thing that we need to do inside here is put a comma. And by the way, one thing that I want to show you is that if you make a slight error just like this, I've got a comma, but I don't have anything else below it. And if I save it, the WP debug is going to scream at us. It's going to say error when decoding JSON file and so on. So this is quite helpful to have because it's very easy to make a typo or an error inside here. Uh, let's do comma. And then the first thing that we're going to look at is the settings. So I'm going to press settings in here. And the first setting that I want to show you, which is a new setting, is the appearance tool. So the appearance tool, if we hover over, this is what the, the schema does here. If I hover over, you will see that this is the setting that enables the following UI tools border, such as the color, radius, style, and width, color for the links, 
spacing, block gap, margin padding, topography, line height. So I want all of them available and I'm going to put these to true. If I save this and if I go back to the editor, refresh this, nothing is going to change in here. But if I go in here and refresh, you will see that if I select, for example, a heading, and then you will see that we're getting this uh, new link color selector here, which we didn't have before. And also if I scroll down a little bit under dimensions, if I click on the plus sign, you see that we can now toggle the padding and the margin on and we're going to have them in here. This actually controls the full padding, as you can see. And the same with the margin, it can show the full margin. But if you want to unlink them, you can click unlink here. And then you can put custom values for it. For example, the top only, the right only, the bottom, and so on. And of course, there is another option here is if you click on the unlink one more time, you get this other option here to set a custom size if you wish in pixels, M's or rems. That's pretty much it. The same with the margin, you can unlink them and so on. The only thing that I wish uh, they had implemented in here is a little bit of a separation between the padding and the margin somehow because it's very easy to get lost. Let me close this and let's have a look at the other stuff. The next setting that we're going to look at is the layout. So let's do comma and inside here let's select layout. For the layout there are two options, the content size which for me is going to be 1543 uh, based on my design and then I'm going to do one more which is the width size and that's going to be 1643 pixels like so which is going to be the wide width of the containers let me show you what i mean so this is a tricky one to understand but i'm going to explain as we go so if you go back to the page we do need to refresh so what i'm going to do is inside here i'm going to create a new container which is called group so let's create a new group and I'm going to give it a background color of this one here. It's the default color that we can use. Inside here, I'm going to create another group uh, just to show you the differences. And this group can be, I don't know, something else. Let's say this light green. And let's call this one, let's give it a paragraph and let's call it in a group normal. And let's duplicate this one and do Control Shift and D or Command Shift and D to duplicate. And let's give it another background color. And this one is going to be in a group wide. I'm going to show you how this works and then one more I'm going to do control shift and D and this one is going to be another color and this is going to be full screen. If we save this super quickly and go back to the website, zoom out a little bit just so you can see, maybe I should have given them a little bit of padding as well. So let me do that super quickly. I'm going to update and so we can see as of currently we have a full width container here with the background color and inside here the other containers are kind of like in the middle and the reason for this is because if I was to select the parent container here you can also select it through the list view here so if I was to select the parent one here you will see that it has a setting inside layout here it has an inner blocks use container width if I was to deselect this and update I mean, you can't see much in here because my screen is probably too small. But if I was to refresh now, you see that they're now taken full width, but the actual container stops in here. And, and this size is actually coming from the content size. So I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to toggle this because I do want that. It's justified to the center. I can justify them to the left, for example. As you can see, now they're justified to the left. I can do the same thing to the right, but let's justify them to the center, like so. And now if I was to change this number to one to something that we can see, something smaller. So now they should go small, as you can see. So this is what the content size is. I'm going to put it back to where I need it. And now let me show you the white size, for example. If I refresh, this is the normal one. The white size can be controlled from here. If you select it, you select the group. Now there are two ways. You can actually put custom ones in here, but also you can click on this icon here, align. And then you can click on white width. So now I know that you probably can't see it yet here because again, my screen is too small maybe. And then if I put update and then if I go back to the website, you will see that we are getting a wider one here. And this is because the number is wider in here. And if I was to change it super quickly for you, you will see that it's a lot wider. So that's how this is working pretty much. So you can have a white container and you can have normal container. And the same goes for the this one here. We can select it and we can go for width and update. 
and now we should have normal, white and full width. This is how they work and normally if you want to control them so they're in the middle, you do need to put them inside a group and then you can put the inner blocks option on if you wish and then justification here. That's pretty much all we need to know. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is the colors. If we select this group for example and if we click on background here, you'll see that we're getting some of the default colors and we're getting some default gradients. Now you can actually create custom colors in here and custom gradients. Let's start by creating a few custom colors. So this is going to be again in settings here and I just need to put a comma so we can start a new one and then inside here we can select color. So for the color start typing palette because we're going to be creating a palette of colors and inside here is where in curly brackets is where we're going to be adding our palette. So for example we need a slug for this one let's call it a background color then comma, then we're going to have a color. This one is going to be a hex color and it's going to be FAF4F0. And then I'm going to do one more. This is going to be the name. I'm going to call it background. If I was to save this, let's go back to the editor, refresh. And now if I click on, for example, the group in here and click on background, you'll see that we're getting our first custom color, which is actually a creamy color for background. I'm going to do exactly the same for the rest super quickly. And also these colors are available pretty much everywhere. So for the text, for the links and so on. So what I'm going to do is copy this and just change it super quickly. So for the next one, we have the contrast color. I'm going to copy and paste, save this. And I already have the values for them. So I'm going to copy and paste. For the contrast color, we have F7, F7, F7. Let's copy this one more time. Now we have the primary color. So I'm going to copy this, paste it. And the primary color that I have is 425F57, give it a name of primary. Let's copy this one more time. We have the secondary color. The secondary color is 749F82. And we have one last color, which is going to be the secondary hover. And for the secondary cover, we have 509265. Don't forget to remove the last comment here because we don't have anything else after it. So we have a couple of colors in here. Let's have a look. Save this and let's go back to the page and refresh. So if I was to click on one of the blocks in here and let's go to the background color, you will see. You will see that they're not appearing and it's because I made a mistake. I've copied contrast too many times. Save this. Let's go back and refresh. So we can't have duplicates basically. And let's click on this background. And now as you can see, we have our background color, we have our contrast color, we have the primary, secondary, secondary hover, and we can use them on pretty much everything that we wish. If I was to select the text, I can just change it from here. Let's update this and let's go back to the page. And now let's focus on the typography. If you go back to the teams.json file, and if we find the settings in here, if you click on this, it's going to show you where it starts and where it ends. So instant here is where we're going to be adding the typography settings. So I'm going to start with putting a comma and then inside here we put typography. For the typography, we can do a couple of settings. For example, if you wish to have a drop cap, which makes the initial let uh, bigger, I don't actually want this. So I'm going to put this to false. And then the next setting that we're going to look into is the fluid. Uh, topography. This is going to trigger the fluid topography, which we can set in a second. This is going to allow us to put a fluid topography, such as a minimum width and maximum width of all font sizes. And then inside here is where we're going to have all font families. And the font families go in brackets because we can have multiple uh, font families. And inside here is where we can add all font face, for example. Let's start adding the first one, by the way. And this one is going to be a Google font. All right, if you go to Google fonts and search for the font that you wish to add, for example, I'm going to be using this one here for headings so I can click on it and you can download it from here. So download font family. I'm going to download it on my desktop for now. And what I'm going to do is show in folder, grab the font and we need to go into the assets font in here and we need to uh, reveal in file explorer. Now inside here is where I'm going to paste the font and then I'm going to extract this. So this is going to be extract all and extract. All right. Now that we have the font downloaded and extracted, 
the first thing that you might want to do is to convert TTF to WOFF2. And you can pretty much use any of the converters online. Just drag the font that you want to convert, for example, this one here, and then convert it to WOFF2. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to remove all of the fonts and just put the one that I've converted to WOFF2. I'm going to do the same for the other font that I'm going to be using. And this is the Quicksand. I've already downloaded this font, so I'm going to paste the folder in here. It's called Quicksand. Again, it comes from Google Fonts. And then inside here, as you will see, I have converted the regular one to WOFF2. So let me remove everything else as we won't need them. And that should be good enough. All right, now let's close the folders and let's jump back into the font families. So for the font face, we need to do another set of curly brackets. And inside here, we need to put font family. The first font family that I'm going to be using is the Merriweather one. And then we put comma and then we can do font stretch. For example, we can put this as normal. And I just wanted to show you some of the other options. As you can see, there are a lot of options here, like font style we can do. And then this can be set to normal as well then we can do font weight it's an important one in this case the font is going to be both for headings so i'm going to put it as 800 and a very important option is the source where this font is coming from and inside here we need to find where this font is located and in all cases it's under assets font and merryweather and then we have the font in here so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this actually copy the whole thing so i don't have to type it and what i'm going to do inside here is file column dot and then we put assets font and then we put Merriweather and then we put the font name which is Merriweather dash bot dot w o f f two and that's pretty much it now this pretty much adds the fonts for us but we also want to give it a name and a slug and what we can do under the font face here we need to do a comma and we need to do font family and we need to do Merriweather like they have in google if you go to for example if you select some of the topography in here let's say the bold one here and if you click on view selected families you will see that we're getting this merryweather serif that's how you include it so what we're going to do is font family it's going to be merryweather serif like so and we can escape the double quotes like so and this is a serif font and we leave it like so the next option that we need to add is the name. So the name for this, I'm going to put as Merriweather again. And then I'm going to put a slug of headings. Like so. Save this. Um, we should have all font included. Now to actually test the font, let me go back. I'm going to remove everything. If I was to refresh, you will see that nothing is changing. And this is because we actually haven't told all elements which font to use. So in order to do this, instead of settings this time, we need to find where settings is. So the start and the bottom. And instead of settings, we need to put this in styles. So inside styles, we're going to have something called elements. And inside elements is where we can select all of the headings or you can select them individually. But what I'm going to do is set all headings to be that font. Inside here, we can select topography. And inside topography, we can select font family. And the font family is going to be called headings. It's going to have a variable name. Now, if you look at the select in here, we call the headings. Now, what this does is it actually creates a CSS variable. Let me show you what I mean. So if you go back to the website and right click inspect, then go back to then, um, sorry. Let me zoom in a little bit. So if I click on the body here, you will see that we're getting a lot of variables. So these are the, some of the default variables that come with WordPress. We have black, white, and so on. But then if you scroll down a little bit more, you should be able to see some of the colors that we added earlier. But not only that, I'm having now a new variable here called WP preset dash dash font dash family headings. And this is set to the Merriweather font that we just added. So I can use this variable inside here. And in order to do this, we put var, just like in CSS, and we will put the variable name. Now, if I save this, and if I go back to the website, and if I refresh, you should be seeing that our custom font is now working. And we can do exactly the same thing for the body text as well. So let's jump back on into the settings here. And I'm going to show you a quick trick. So in Visual Studio Code, if you click on, for example, styles in here, it's going to show you all the other objects that we've created. And for example, I want to go inside settings 
and I want to go inside topography and that's going to navigate a little bit quicker than just going up and down. One thing that I've noticed is that I have four spaces, which is because I didn't reset my Visual Studio code. I had to reinstall, but uh, normally I have them set to two spaces and that's going to be a lot better. And I also have an extension called Prettier, so I can do right click and format the document and that will do it for me. Perfect. So where we have the font families, we want to add one more. And essentially the process is going to be exactly the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to do a comma and paste it. And inside here, I need to start rewriting everything to uh, go to this font here. So I'm going to copy the name super quickly and I'm going to be using quicksand regular for the body text. So let's start with the font family. This is going to be quicksand. I'm going to paste the font in here. So I can copy the quicksand. And so this is going to be font stretch normal, font style normal. The font weight is going to be 400. The file is going to be under assets fonts, quicksand, quicksand regular WOFF2. Then we have quicksand. And instead of serif, this is actually a sans serif font. And the name can be quicksand and the slug can be body. For the body text, you can call it whatever you like pretty much. So now if I save this and if I go back to the browser and if I refresh, if I go to body and if I scroll down a little bit more, we should be able to see all new font here, which has the WP preset font family of body. So I can copy this and I can use it for the body topography. So inside styles, instead of elements, this time we're going to put it in here and I'm going to put topography and inside topography is where we can put the font family which is going to be a variable that we just copied like so. And we can put a custom line height. So for example, here it is line height, and this is going to be 1.75 comma font size. We can do it to whatever we like. So let's say 18 pixels for now, but I'm going to change this in a second. So I'm going to save this. Let's go back and let's see what are these changes now. Refresh. And as you can see, the font changed, which is great. And it made it a lot bigger everywhere. Awesome. I'm not actually going to leave the font size that big, but just for now, for the testing purposes, that's absolutely fine. Now let's have a look at the topography size and make sure that everything is responsive. Now, as I showed you earlier, if I put fluid to true, look at what happens now. So if I inspect and if I click on the mobile view here, so we can have a responsive uh, website. So if I scale down this, you will see that the fonts are actually scaling. Even the headings, everything is scaling, which is great as default. Now, if I was to remove this fluid to false, look at what happens now. I'm going to refresh and you will see that nothing is scaling anymore. All of the fonts are the way they are so far. You can tell that they're not scaling anymore. What we can do is we can set the fonts to fluid to true because we do want responsive font, but we can also set custom size for the topography. If we go to settings, and if we go to, sorry, if we go to settings and if we go to topography, so we have the topography in here, we have the font families. After the font families, where we have this bracket, we can do another line. And inside here is where we can do font sizes. So inside font sizes, uh, we need to start with a fluid. And then this is going to allow us to have uh, two options. So the first option is going to be the maximum. And the maximum in this case is going to be one rem for me. For this one, I'm going to, and now I'm going to show you how this works. And for example, the second option is the minimal, which is going to be 0 0.875 rem like so, and save. If I do a comma here, we can also give this a name, which is going to be small. We can also give it a slug, which is going to be small again. And we can also give it a size, which is going to be... In this case, one rem. Save this. If I was to go back to the website one more time, refresh, and if I do inspect, and then if you go to uh, body, we can search for small. And then, unfortunately, it doesn't bring up the value that I want, but here it is, it's highlighted. So, what this does is it essentially creates this variable for me that I can re reuse throughout the entire website, and it creates a clamp. The clamp basically makes the fonts responsive. So what I wanted to mention that if you're struggling with the topography, how to do the sizes properly, I'm going to quickly try to explain this to you. If I was to go to my, I think this was the old design that I did in the previous tutorial, but it doesn't matter. The concept is the same. So 
For example, what I've done is I designed how my small headings and regular text I want it to look like, and then I designed the big ones. It's a little bit broken here, but it doesn't matter. So we have smaller text and we have a bigger text. And what I've done is I actually calculated the REM values. As you can see, this is 2.113 REM and this is 3. So there is a little bit of a difference. And uh, the same for the other ones. I think the regular text always says, uh, stays at 1 REM. But uh, for the headings, I do want to have them responsive. So what I've done is I've designed this. And also I took some inspiration from timescale.com. If you go to... Uh, this website here, you can choose a lot of options in here, how you want to design your topography. So I've taken inspiration from this and just modified it. And also in order to make sure that this is working well and correctly, what I did in the previous tutorial as well is that I went to this website here, which I'm gonna copy and paste. This is basically a clamp calculator. You put the minimum font size, the uh, minimum viewport, and then you put the maximum font size, the maximum viewport, and this gives you the result. So this gives you the calculations of what you need to do. And this is what I'm going to be doing for the headings. Um, I'm actually, I actually just copied the headings from the last tutorial, but uh, this is how I pretty much done it, just so you know. So let's close all of this and let's continue. All right, now let's do a few more. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it super quickly inside here, and this is going to be the medium. So I'm going to put name as medium here. The slack is going to be medium, and then the size for the medium is going to be 1.125 rem. Now the maximum size is going to be the same, and then the minimum size is going to be 1 rem. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to do large for this one. So large, select large. The size for the large is going to be 1.75 rem. The minimum is going to be 1.75 rem. The maximum is going to be 1.875 rem. And now I'm going to show you how to do another one, but this time we're going to turn off the fluidity. So what I'm going to do is comma, and inside here we do another set of curly brackets, and I'm going to do fluid, and this is going to be turned to false this time, like so. And now this font is going to is not going to be responsive, and I can just set the size to be 2.25 rem, and then the slope to be x large. Now I'm going to copy the last one in here, so comma and paste it. And for the last one, we have a fluid of max 10 rem, minimum is 4 rem, the size is 10 rem, the slug is xx large, and we also need a name, which is going to be xx large. Like so. Save this, and all topography should be good to go. Now, if I refresh, you will see that obviously nothing has changed, but what I want to do for the body text, let's find it super quickly. I'm going to search for body. And here where we have the font size and I want to make sure that this is using the medium size, which is going to be under a variable. And then inside here we do dash dash WP dash dash preset dash dash font dash size dash dash medium. And hopefully if we refresh, you'll see that we, this is now changed and we have all those variables. Uh, under or disposal in order to use throughout the layout. If I click on body, you should be able to find them around um, around here. So here they are, we have the small, the medium, which we're using for our body. We have the large, extra large, and so on. And as you can see, the extra large is the only one that doesn't have the clamp on in here, which, which we uh, put as fluid to false like so. Now we can do something similar for the headings. If you don't like the, the way the headings look like, we can actually change them as well. So if you go to, if you click on settings, let's go to styles and let's go to elements and let's click on the headings that we created earlier. Here it is. And inside the, and inside the element is where we can put a comma and we can target every single element in here. So for example, I want to target the H1 here and for this, I'm going to put topography and inside topography, we have a lot of uh, options as you can see, but the only one I'm going to change today is the font size. And I've already calculated the clamp for this one, which I showed you how to do this earlier from, and what I can do inside here is literally use the clamp property and send the font like so. They are a little bit long as you can see, uh, you can 
pause the video and copy if you wish. And then for the next thing that I'm going to do, let's put a comma and let's put line height to be 1.2 for this one. The same needs to be done for the rest. So what I can do is copy this and instead of H1, oh, I need a comma as well. We need to do this do the same for the rest. I'm going to do H2 and I'm just going to change the clamp size and potentially the line height. So I'm going to copy and paste this one here. Feel free to copy this. Of course, feel free to change the line height. I actually didn't calculate the highlight, so I'm going to leave as it is. And I'm going to continue doing exactly the same thing. So H3, I'm going to copy my calculation super quickly. And then I'm going to do a few more. H4, H5, and the last one is going to be H6. And that's it. So now if I save this and if I go back, you should see that the headings are going to change. Yep, they changed. And also if I go to inspect and let's scale the website down just so we can see how they work. As you can see, they are shrinking down. So they are responsive. A little bit hard to see, but yeah, they are shrinking down. They are responsive, which is good. That's pretty much the topography sorted. Let's have a look at some of the links and maybe the buttons. So for the links, let's create one inside here. Maybe we can just do this is a link. I can just grab it and just put a dummy link in here like so. Open a new tab, whatever, and save. Okay. If we refresh, you will see that we're getting the uh, default blue link in here. And let's have a look at how we can style it. So the links are going to go in styles, elements, and then we can literally just at the bottom of or H6 maybe around here is where we can create is where we can create another element so comma and then we can put link so for the link we have a lot of options in here as you can see and let's start with the most important one which is the color so for the color we have a couple of options background gradient and text for the text what I'm going to do is use one of our color variable names that we created earlier. For example, I can use the contrast one. So what I'm going to do is a variable. And then inside here, I'm going to do dash dash preset, dash dash color, dash dash contrast. Save this, close it, save this. Let's go back, restart. And as you can see, this is now turning to black. And we can do exactly the same thing for the rest of the options so for example if i do comma and then if i do let's say hover inside the hover we can do typography and i can do for example text decoration and uh, for the text decoration maybe we just say none this will remove in the line and as a default as you can see when you hover over it removes it and we can do a few more so if we do comma and then if we do focus inside here we can do the topography one more time. Let me move a little bit. And then we can do text decoration to none. Let's have a look at a few more. So let's do a comma here and let's do active. For the active, we can put the color to be text and we can put exactly the same variable name in here. So I'm going to copy this, paste it. And that should work quite well. But also I'm going to set the topography in here to be, to have text decoration of none, like so. And the last thing that I'm going to do inside link here, I'm going to put another comma and I'm going to say select topography and I'm going to put topography text decoration to be set to underline. So all links are underlined. If I save this and if you go back, we should be able to see, I mean, I haven't clicked on this link. so. That's why we should be able to see the differences and so on. So this is pretty much how you style the links. And now let's move on into the button. So if you go back again to the team.json and we need to be inside the elements in here. If you go to style elements and if we click on the starting point, then we can find the end point in here. And inside there, I'm going to do a comma and we can do a button. So for the button, it's pretty much exactly the same as what we've done, but I'm going to do some other options. So for example, can do spacing. Uh, this is essentially the padding of the button. And for the spacing, you can control the block gap, the margin or the padding. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to control the padding here. And I want to say the top of my button to be 
0.7 m comma and then i want the right to be 1.6 m i want the bottom to be 0.7 m just like the top so they're consistent and i want the left to be 1.6 m like so if we save this and go back you should see well i'm not sure if you'll be able to see the difference now but there should be a little bit of a difference now and let's do a little bit more so instead of spacing just outside it let's change the topography so i'm going to change the font size in here and for the font size i'm going to do variable and then this is going to be wp reset reset font size and then dash dash regular and we can also change the line height in here for the button but i actually haven't prepared one so i'm going to leave it as it is and save so essentially if i refresh everything is looking normal then let's do a few more options okay and before we continue i've noticed that i've missed dash dash here and dash dash in here okay that should fix the button all right this is looking good so now let's change the color of the button to do this under topography i can do comma and then we can do color inside here we can do background and for the background we can do variable dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash color dash dash uh, secondary and then close this copy the variable and then let's do another line text and inside here we can do the variable and instead of secondary we can do contrast like so save let's have a look how this looks and as you can see this is looking pretty good maybe there needs to be a little bit more contrast but that's absolutely fine the other thing that i wanted to show you is that what on the page here should be reflected in the editor as well so if i refresh you should see that the button is also green as the default, which is great. Now let's change some of the behaviors of the button. Let's do a comma and let's do hover, for example. So for the hover, I'm going to change the color one more time. And in fact, I'm going to copy this and just change in here. So what's wrong with this? Um, oh, so for, the, so for the hover, we can change the color as well. And inside here is, I'm going to copy this and just change the colors from secondary maybe we can do secondary color and the contrast can stay the same so now if i refresh oops if i refresh this page and if i hover over you will see that we're getting the hover effect and we can do exactly the same thing with the focus so under hover i can do focus and for the focus we can do color to be completely honest with you i'm just going to copy this in here but of course feel free to change it we can do the same thing with visited. I'm going to change that as well. So instead of focus, visited, and I'm going to leave it as the others here. So that should be done. Let's refresh and we should be good to go. So that's pretty much our button. The last thing that I wanted to show you is that if you wish to change the border radius of the button, what you can do is put a comma and you can do border. And inside here, you can do the radius. So the radius, all you do is put a value. For example, I can just put zero. And now we should have a square button, which is awesome. All right now, let's have a look at how we can set custom variables. If we jump back to the team.json file, and if we go to settings, and then pretty much anywhere inside settings, uh, let me see where they are. They finish here. So pretty much anywhere inside settings, I can do comma and another line. And inside here, we have custom. If you select custom inside here we can create custom variables let's say that we wanted to create a custom variable for rounded corners rounded dash corners for example and then inside here i can just put let's say one rem and now this is going to be created on our website if i do right click inspect and if i go to body and then if i search for rounded uh it should be here we go here is <clears throat> it should be here at the bottom and you might be wondering well we've already done quite a few variables why are you showing me this and the reason i'm showing you this is because you might want to have a global rounded corners uh, throughout your website and instead of kind of like let's go to the button for example here where we created it where we have the radius uh, for example instead of doing the numbers manually throughout the whole layout maybe you want to be consistent and do variable and then you put the corners in here and then i would use this variable throughout the entire json file and then i'll have a single place of where i can control the border radius 
And if I refresh the page one more time, you'll see that the button will change now, which is great. So I'm actually going to leave the buttons like this. And the next thing that I want to look into is the blog gap and the padding of our website. As you can see at the moment, the content is right to the edge of our website. If I was to scale this down, our mobile again is right to the edge. But I don't actually want that. I want as default to have a little bit of space, at least on mobile, just so the content is not right to the edge. If we jump back to the theme.json file, and if we go to styles, maybe even here at the top, we can do that. And let's put spacing. So here it is, spacing. And there are a couple of options. For example, you can have, you can control the gap between the actual blocks. And for example, let's put this as 30 pixels. I'm not sure if you're going to see the difference now, but yeah. So you see there is a gap of 30 pixels between the blocks now. If I put that to zero, let's have a look. As the default, there is no gap between the blocks. And this is exactly what I want in this case. So I'm going to leave it zero. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is set the padding. So I'm going to click padding. And then I want to start from top. The top padding I'm going to put to zero. Then the right is going to be one rem. Bottom is going to be zero and then left is going to be one rem as well. So what that's going to do is going to push the layout here on the left side and the right side. And now we have a little bit of a gap, which is great. Of course, we have the padding on the left and the right side here, but I still want my website to be full screen. And this is a little bit of a problem. As you can see, what we can do is if we go at the top where we have the settings, we can add one more setting in here called use root padding aware alignment. And if we set this to true, this should solve the problem for us. We go back and if we refresh, you will see that this solves the problem for us inside here. And we should still have, and if I inspect super quickly, we should still have the padding here, as you can see, which is great. Now, the reason that the heading one, heading two, all the content here doesn't have it is because we need to put them in a group. So for example, let's say, uh, let's see if I can quickly drag all of them. I'm not sure if that's possible. Okay. It is, which is, yep. I can select all of them with shift and then hopefully I can drag them in. And now by update, we should be able to have a little bit of space on the left side here. Yep, we do. And this is the space that we've put. Uh, so we have. I believe is this here, the global padding left and right. And in fact, let's quickly change it to see the difference. So we have, it was under styles, spacing. Let's say that we want this to be 4M and 4M, something a little bit more, something a little bit bigger, just so we can see the difference. So refresh. And as you can see, we have much, much more space between the content and the edges, which is great. That fixes it. I'm going to go to back, back to one rem and save this refresh and we're good to go. The last thing that I want to show you is this detail view here. And this can be quite helpful when you're creating your pages for the SEO. So if you're familiar with the HTML5 outliner, this is pretty much the same thing. It helps you out with the document outline and it gives you a lot of details, such as how many words you have, characters, time to read, blocks, paragraphs, headings, and of course, most importantly, how your document is outlined, which can be helpful for SEO and also accessibility as well. Save this page and let's jump back to the website. Okay, let's start creating the first part of our website, which is going to be the header. Navigate to edit site. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. You can do it through the team.json as well to register one. But if you click on the logo here, and then if you jump to template part, from here, we can create a new part. So add new, and then we can say header, and then let's just give it a title of header. Great. And that's going to be our header here. I'm just going to do a little text saying header and save this. So this is going to be our header that is going to be reused for the entire website. And if I wanted to add this header to the page template, what I can do is go to edit site, and then I can click on here, template, click on page and then I can insert the header from here. So if we search for header, we, you should get this icon in here and then you just click on it, 
and choose choose and then insert the header that we just created it will look a lot better when we add some colors and the menu and so on so click on this make sure that it goes at the top save it and now if i go back to the page you will see that we're getting the header here and if i go back to the demo page that we created earlier we have the header as well which is great now let's focus on making the header look good i'm going to go to the home page and then let's go to the editor of the header so as long as we have header selected here we can start i'm going to wrap everything in a group so i'm going to delete this text and do slash and then group which is essentially a container for this container i'm going to leave it as it is and inside this container i'm going to create another one so another container and this container is going to have a background color of this secondary color here like so and i'm going to add a paragraph that says extra percenter of or plant with code extra 20 and then i'm going to center line this like so and change the text color from here to the contrast color that i created earlier let's save this super quickly and let's view it and as you can see we are getting the header here but it's not full width so i definitely want this to be full width in order to do this we can click on the group and and toggle the inner blocks is container width like so and save the next thing that i'm going to do is let's create another group and then this group is going to be outside this group actually this is going to be hard there we go and sometimes it's very very well it's pretty much impossible to move this group at the bottom because it's going to move it inside this group as you can see i've tried pretty much everything but it doesn't work so what you can do is move it here at the top and then click on the down button and that will move it for you. Hopefully these things will be fixed at some point as of now. That's the way it's going to be. And one other thing that I forgot to do on this one here, I'm going to click on it and change the font size to small. Just to make it look a little bit better. This group, I'm going to click on the dark green color. And inside this group, I'm going to create a row. And the row is essentially going to help us with the justification. We can justify to the left middle center or space between which is what we're going to be using so inside here let's add the logo i also want to add search so i'm going to click on the plus sign here but i want to add the woocommerce search from here the the purple one let's click on that that's going to add the search and the last thing that i'm going to do is add one more woocommerce item which is going to be the cart mini cart is what i'm going to use for this project and that's it so if we click on the row now, we can justify to the middle, top, bottom, and then we can say justify item center, or we can justify space between, which is exactly what I want to push the logo on the left, search in the middle and cut on the right. Okay, let's update the logo. Click on this arrow here, and then let's just track the logo. I've got it as SVG. And as you can see, we can't actually use SVGs in here. And in order to fix this, what we can do is go to plugins super quickly. So dashboard and then plugins. And then if you go to add new, search for SVG support. And then the one that you can install is this SVG support plugin. And that should allow us to upload SVGs to our website. Activate it. And then let's close this. We will need to refresh this page because it won't work straight away. So make sure you save it first, refresh. And now if we click on the logo one more time, let's upload it. Here it is. And then I can just remember that the size is 190. Then if I click on it, let's change the image width to 190. And we should be good to go. The logo is done. Let's focus on the search. If you click on the actual search bar, you'll see that it does have a couple of options, which is pretty cool. So one of them is toggle search label. I'm going to untoggle it. The other one is to remove the button. So button inside, button, no button is what I want. And that's pretty much it. The other thing that I'm going to change is the border radius. I'm just going to put that to the top, 100 pixels, and that would make it look a little bit nicer. As you can see, we have no other control of this. Unfortunately, like height is what I would like to change. So what I'm going to do is let's save this. Let's go to the home page. We'll need to add a little bit of padding to the actual heading, but that's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect the search bar here. And let me show you. So what I'm looking for is the input. And I'm looking for a unique class name that is going to be 
good to use for this search bar without breaking anything else. This one looks good to me, the WP block dash search underscore underscore info. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to jump into the editor openstyle.css and inside here is where we're going to do a class name, which is, means you put dot and then WP dash block dash search and the underscore underscore input. And inside here is where I'm going to change the height since we can't do it from the editor to something like 40 pixels. And I'm going to do adding left of 20 pixels just so we can move the text a little bit. So now you will see if I do control shift and R or, or just refresh the page, you'll see that this is a little bit bigger now and we have a little bit of space on the left, which makes it a little bit better. The other thing that I'm going to modify is the padding here. So I'm going to click on the unlink and then let's change the top to somewhere around five. Let's change the bottom around five and we should be good for the left and right. Let's leave as the food and that should make it look a little bit better. Let's focus now on the card here. I'm pretty much just going to change the text color to the contrast color like so. And as you can see, uh, you have different behaviors like here, open card uh, drawer or do nothing. We'll see about this later on. Maybe I can modify it, but uh, we also can hide the price if you wish to and so on. And this should be looking a little bit better now. A problem that we're going to have straight away is if you go to mobile, you'll see that this isn't working very well. And we don't have much control, unfortunately. If we do columns, that will work. But if we do columns, we'll have the logo, which we might not be able to center. We'll have the search and then we'll have the cart at the bottom, which is not exactly what I want. I would rather have the logo on the left, the cart on the right, and the search here big in the middle. So unfortunately, there is not much we can do here. Uh, what we can do is click on the row and then allow to wrap multiple lines. And that will kind of fix it, as you can see. I mean, if that works for you, yeah, go ahead and leave as it is. Maybe make a little bit of part in between them and that might just work for you. But I don't personally like it. So I'm going to show you how we can modify it with CSS. Copy the editor will improve and we'll be able to do all this inside here. But for now, there is not much we can do. And this is the only big CSS that we're going to be doing, but it's not going to be too much anyway. All right, in order to make this look good on desktop and mobile, we're going to have to do a little bit of CSS. All right, what I'm going to do is on the row here, I'm going to put a custom class called custom dash header. Then for the logo, I'm going to click on it and do the same custom dash header but this time i'm going to put underscore underscore logo and then i'm going to do similar to search click on the search here additional class name custom header underscore underscore search and then i'm going to do the same thing for the card custom header underscore underscore and then card like so let's save this let's go back to style.css i've put a little comment in here custom header styles and these are class names so we start with dot like so custom header and that's our first one so we're gonna have a few more obviously we have the custom header underscore underscore logo we have the custom header underscore underscore search and we have the last one which is custom header underscore underscore cart like so i want to convert this into grid and in order to do this we go under the one that is wrapping all of the elements and we do display great and we have to unfortunately put this as important in order to overwrite the flexbox that is already set up from the editor we're going to do grid template columns and i'm going to create one fr for the logo on the left side so one fraction of the screen two fr for the search bar so it's a little bit bigger and then one fr for the cart technically speaking if i go back and if i refresh here you should see that everything is working as it should that needs to be aligned to the right side, but that's not a problem. We can do that. As you can see, the search bar is looking a lot bigger. And if you don't like how big it is, you can always change this to the size that you want. Let's say one FR and that will change it. In fact, that looks a lot better. So I'm going to leave it as it is now. What we can do now is when we go on mobile, we're still not solving the issue. So it's still, it's actually breaking now. It's not looking good. So what I can do, give each element an area name so we can control it easier. So this is going to work like this. Grid, template, areas. And inside here, we can literally do the areas kind of like uh, rows and columns. So imagine these are columns. 
And what we can do for the logo, we can give it a specific name, so grid area, and this can be called logo. This one is going to be grid area, and this is going to be search. I do need to remove the four spaces, but that's fine for now. And then grid area, this is going to be cart. And now grid will know which section is which. So what I can do is on mobile, we want to change this to one fraction and one fraction because we want two columns actually. So this is going to go logo, cart, and then on the second row, we're going to have search and search taking two columns. So we have two rows with two columns and look at what, what's going to happen now. So we have this on the left side, this on the right side, and we have the search. For mobile, that's pretty much what we want. As you can see, of course, I'm going to have to align this, but that's not a big issue. In fact, I can probably go here, click on it. Can I align it? Um, that's okay. We can align it from here. So cut, we can do display flex and we can just do justify content to the right and that should fix the first issue. Oops. As you can see, that fixes the first issue. Of course, of course, we can do it a little bit of a gap between all the elements. So I can do gap and maybe 0.4 rem. Let's see if this works. I'm going to refresh. And I think we already have gap from the editor. So if this doesn't work, try important. Have a look. Uh, yeah, that's starting to work. So maybe even one rem. And that's a lot better. Cool. So now for the desktop, we need to do something similar. So what we can do is let's put a media query inside here. Media, we can do only screen and then we can do and and inside here we do minimum width needs to be 600 pixels and then inside here we grab the custom header and we just need to modify a little bit so this is going to go instead of we already have grid on it so we don't need it it flows downwards and then we have grid template columns we can do one fr one fr one fr we can put the search inside here in the middle and close this pretty much and maybe we'll see if we need to control the gap in a second. So if I was to refresh now. And we need to fix this, by the way. We need to remove, we need to put some space in between here just so this works. And let's refresh now. Okay, as you can see, this is working on desktop. We have the search here. And if we go down to mobile, like so, we're getting the mobile view a lot better. And that's pretty much it. Now, the next bit we're going to look into is the navigation. Inside the header editor, let's go to the list view and let's go inside the group. In fact, we just need to create another group inside here. So that needs to be outside one more time. Like so, and just put it down one more time. I'm going to put this as background. Um, I want to change this to a darker background, which I don't have here yet. So what I'm going to do is add a base color super quickly. I'm going to go to the theme.json. Sorry about that. And then, and then inside here, where settings color, I'm going to add one more color just so I have a darker color to use. And this is going to be called base with one free, one free, one free. Save this. Let's reload. And now if I click on this group here, then we can add the dark background color. Awesome. Let's add the navigation now. I'm going to click on the plus sign here and search for nav navigation, this one here. And then what I want to do is center line this, justify lines, justify item center, like so. It's hard to see, but, but we can fix this in a second. As you can see, there are some elements in here and we can actually click on them and remove them if you want to. Uh, one thing that we can do is click here, click here on the edit, and this will convert everything into links, which is absolutely fine. So now we have a little bit more control over them. And I know it's hard to see, but I'll fix them in a second. Let's save this and let's see how we can modify the navigation. If you go back to the themes.json file and search for styles. So instead of settings, let's go to styles. And at the bottom of styles, let's say around here, inside styles we can do blocks and now we can modify and now we can modify different blocks such as the navigation this is going to be called navigation let's go for that and for the navigation we need to do color 
And then for the color, we can just set the text to be the contrast color here. I can copy this variable super quickly, paste it, save it, and refresh. And you can see that we are now having the navigation with the white color. Let's have a look at some other options. So for example, spacing, block gap, I'm going to put as one rem, see how this looks like. And what else did we have? And let's have a look at what else did we have super quickly. And then maybe you can do a little bit of padding and margin maybe. So padding to the top of 0 0.2 rem. Oh, let's have a look at this because I'm not so sure. But as you can see, this is already looking a little bit better. I think if I give it a little bit more padding to the top and maybe the bottom, uh, we won't have to adjust the actual container. So let's do bottom and the buttons are going to be easier to press as well. So 0 0.4 rem in here as well. I did it a little bit different earlier. So that's why I'm kind of guessing here, but that's already looking pretty good. And now if we go to mobile, as you can see, we're getting this toggle button here and that's not so bad. So let me show you the rest of the settings super quickly. If we go in here, I do need to refresh so we can get the latest and let it load. Here we go. And inside here is where you can basically, let's say, remove some of the links. And inside here, when you click, and when you click on the navigation, by the way, inside here is where you can control pretty much all of it. So the action menu you can control from here, it's already created a one for us called navigation. And you can create a new one from here as well. So if you do that, let's create a new one. And maybe it's called a navigation too. And all we have to do is click on the add block here. And then you can just type, let's say we want the home. Here we go. And then just like so, you can duplicate this as well and just add some more links. So what I'm going to do super quickly is I'm going to save this and add a few more pages. And I'm going to do that in the dashboard, pages, and I'm going to speed up the process for this. So I just want uh, a few pages, for example, let's say all products. Save this. And I'm going to add. OK, now that we have those pages, I can go back to the editor here, refresh, and now we should be able to get the the other uh, links. Okay. And if I click on the navigation here, uh, if you can't see it, you can just click on here navigation. And then if you click manage menus, uh, we do need to leave, but inside here, you'll see the menus that we have. And if you click on one, uh, I mean, you can't really control much in here, but this is how you can create different navigation. So I'm going to actually remove the navigation too, because we won't need it. And I'm going to go back and refresh. Let's go back. And now we just need to select the menu that we have. So navigation and let's modify this super quickly. So I'm going to remove pretty much everything. So let's remove this. Let's remove this, remove, remove, and let's remove the demo. And now I'm going to add some custom ones from here, from the plus sign. And I'm going to say all products. Let's add a few more new product and I'm going to add the last one special offers like so, and that's going to be it. So if I save this, that's looking good. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is that you can uh, control the display here. So for example, you might want to have an icon for mobile when we go to mobile super quickly, you might want to have an icon like this, or you can have the option of free. I do like the two. Uh, then there are a couple of other options here, overlay menu, mobile, always, uh, and you can change the text, the background, the sub menu and overlay text, sub menu and overlay background, and you can adjust the spacing and uh, dimensions from here. Pretty much. You can also go to advanced and then uh, add custom classes if you need to, but that's not too bad. And I think that's pretty much all header done. Now, one thing that I do need to mention is that the because we used grid here and the actual full site editing doesn't understand it you will see that this isn't working in the editor but it is working inside here and it's not a big deal but it is a little bit annoying that it doesn't reflect the exact same changes 
uh, we'll have to wait for updates, I guess. We're almost done with this, but one thing that you might notice is that we don't actually know which page we're on. If I go to the all products page, you'll see that it's not actually highlighting this. And to be completely honest, I tried quite a few things and I couldn't figure it out. So for example, if I go to the block, to the navigation block and under spacing here, what I could do is potentially I can target the elements, right? And then I can target the link maybe. And inside the link, I can target the I don't know, active or focus. Uh, should we do? Let's do, let's do active. And then for the active, I can target the color. And then for the color, I can target the text and pull it up and put it as red, for example. So if I refresh now, and if I click on it, you will see that this changes. But one thing that I didn't see anywhere is that there is no current item inside here. So the only way I can do it for now is if you go here and if you inspect the element, what you can do is grab the, uh, let's see where we are. Are we, we are on all products. So we need to focus on all products here. As you can see, it has this specific class name called current menu item. And then we can select the A with CSS, the link. Copy this, go back to the CSS. Uh, let me know if there is a way of doing this, by the way, with the team.json. I'm, I'm just not aware of one. And then inside here, what I'm going to do is current dash menu dash item. We're going to target the link. And inside here, we can pretty much do whatever we like. So I'm just going to do the font weight of 800 and be lazy. So let's put a little comment and that's it. I'm going to save, refresh now. And as you can see, now we know which page we're on. Of course, you can do underline or whatever you prefer. And if I click on mob, uh, sorry, home, you will see that we are home, new products, we are on new products and so on. We just don't have any content on the other pages yet. And that's it. Also like to have a little bit more space between them, but these are things that I can always adjust, I guess. So that looks a little bit better. And now we are pretty much done with the heading. Let's focus on the footer. So for the footer, we're going to have to do exactly the same thing. Let's go to the menu here. Let's click on template parts, create new, add new, sorry, and then footer. And we just call this one footer like so, create it, and we should be good to go. So inside here, what I'm going to do is create a container. So group, and then this group is going to have a background color or this base background color. And then inside here, where we can just do two columns so we don't have to mess around with CSS. And this seems to be a little bit buggy here, but I'm going to do uh, this one here, which is kind of like equal columns, 50-50, 50%, And then inside this one, the first column here, I'm going to create another column like so, and I'm going to do the same, two columns. And then inside here, I'm going to create a heading, and this is going to be called about. I'm going to make it H4. Maybe let's make it white super quickly. And then I can duplicate this, move it to the next column here. And then I'm going to change this to company. And then that will be it. For this, we can use the navigation here. And I would say that you can create a custom one if you wish to for the footer. But for now, just, just, uh, but for now, I'm going to leave this as it is, and I'm going to change the orientation like so. And it's very hard to see, but hopefully if I save and refresh, that will work. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, it is a little bit buggy. Uh, let's refresh. Okay. Yep. Okay, that's, that fixed it. So that's working a little bit better. But as you can see, we're getting a little bit of a problem with the gap here. So potentially, I can just do that manually from the dimensions, and that will fix the problem. Let me duplicate this one more time and I'm going to put it in the company. And of course, feel free to create different menus for your different sections, but I'm just trying to speed up the process here. For the company, I'm going to copy this one more time and move it to the right column here. And I'm going to say newsletter. Let me copy a little bit of text like so. And I need to turn this text to white. And then inside here, I would add custom HTML. If you use MailChimp, you can go to MailChimp, login, create an account, and then from MailChimp, they can give you the form code and you can just paste it in here and that should work. But to speed up the process, I'm not going to put the MailChimp in here. 
and you might use a different company uh, as well. And the last thing that I'm going to do is put some social media icons, so social icons from here, and you can pretty much uh, select whatever you like. Let's say uh, logos only, and I can click here. It's kind of hard to see, but I can click here and let's say Facebook. I can click on it and let's have a look. If I click on the Facebook, we can put the URL and that will make it active now. And I can do exactly the same with the other icons. Let's say uh, Twitter is another one that we might add. Let's add the link like so. And also you can change the icons to pill shape. Uh, you can give them a little bit of spacing between and so on. Let's have a look. Maybe show labels. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I'll leave it as this and save. The last thing that I'm going to do is on the whole group here, I'm going to give it a little bit of padding from, say, top, maybe five, and let's say bottom five. And I'm going to create one more row, maybe, inside this group or column. Yeah, row I think will be good. So I can click on this and say row. Let's create a row. And inside this row, let's create a paragraph. And this paragraph is going to say copyright. I'm going to move it in the middle if I can. Or I can click on the row here, move in the middle, and just make sure that the text is set to white. So this is going to say copyright, one plant, build with care, something like this. And then maybe we can just change the padding a little bit. So the padding at the top can be something like this. And maybe a little bit to the bottom. Okay, we actually created the footer, but we haven't inserted it into our page template. So what I'm going to do is edit site, go to uh, the WordPress logo here, then um, and templates and page. And then inside the page, after the content of the page, we can do footer. And then uh, WooCommerce comes up with some great suggestions as well here. But what I want is the footer that we created. So footer, choose existing one, choose, and then here it is. It pops out. Click on it. Maybe we do need a little bit of padding to the top. Oh, sorry, margin to the top. Let's save this and let's have a look. So if I go back, that's already looking good. Of course, we'll normally have a lot more content. And MailChimp is, this is where the MailChimp code is going to go. I'll see how long is the video. Maybe I can grab the code from MailChimp and paste it in here super quickly. One last thing that I'm going to do for the footer is grab the whole container here and give it a little bit of margin at the top. So select margin from dimensions and then de, uh, de link the margins and then do top. Maybe this five will do. And we're good to go. Okay, we're done. Let's start constructing our homepage. So navigate to your homepage and then click edit page here. To start with, I'm going to remove everything that we don't need. And then I'm going to create a new group. This group is going to contain a cover. A cover is pretty much a big block where you can add an image to it. Let's open the media library and let's just drag an image here. Of course, Optimize the images, put all text and all that, select it. And now, as you can see, we have a nice cover. For this group, we're gonna unclick the layout here. So, because I want it to be for width. For the title, let's make something up by plant now. And then I can convert this into an H1 from here. So, H1. And then this can be text white. I don't think that. Um, I wasn't, I don't think that you can control the text of the actual block inside the theme.json, but correct me if I'm wrong. And then, and then for the text, I'm going to create a paragraph and let's turn this into white as well. And this is going to be center lines like so. And if you want this to be on two lines without actually making two paragraphs, if you press enter, this is going to look ugly and it's going to make two paragraphs as you can see. But what you can do is hold shift and enter and this will just put this text on another line, which is a little hack that you can use. And as you can see, we only have one paragraph. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a button. So let's say button, add one there. Make sure that is justified to the center. It's all center lined. And this is going to say buy, buy plants now. If we click on the actual cover, 
you will see that we have a lot of options. For example, you can have a repeated background. You can have a fixed background, which kind of like scrolls down. It creates kind of like a parallax effect in a way. And then you can control where the image is seen. So maybe I just want a little bit of that part to be seen more. Uh, you can have the old text in here. And one thing that is important is the overlay. So you can actually add an overlay from here. I can add this color and I can make it bright or dark depending on what's readable. In this case, nothing is readable. So maybe we need the dark one. Like say, I don't fully like the dark one. But yeah, these are things that you can adjust. Let's go with the black one, 50% opacity and save. So if you go to the homepage now, you'll see that we're getting this beautiful cover. That's it. I, didn't, I think this looks a little bit smaller than I like. Let's have a look. It's H1. Maybe I can just do it as an Excel and that would be much, much better. Okay, perfect. The next section that I'm going to do is going to be the popular product. Open the list view and I'm going to create another group. So let's create another group if I can. Uh, yep, I can't. So let's click here group and now okay that created it just after which is correct i want the group to be below no i want this group to be outside it always does that so i need to move this to the top if i can and then i need to move it down and one thing that i notice is that if you wish to change your background color by the way it's fairly simple uh, you go to the teams.json we find styles we click on them and inside here anywhere pretty much anywhere inside styles we can do color and from here, you can target your colors. For example, we need to do the background. So I'm going to do a variable. And this is going to be a dash dash WP dash dash preset dash dash color dash dash background. And this is the background color that I created early in this tutorial here at the top. Here it is. And I can do the same for the base uh, just in case because I didn't do that earlier. So let's close this and let's do the text so the text everywhere on the website i want it to be variable dash dash in fact let's copy all of this and put it as base which is a dark color so now if i refresh and now everything should work as normal it's kind of hard to see i'm hoping that it's working but if i was to refresh this maybe we'll see in here uh, yeah, you can see the background color change. So that's working. Maybe the footer is adding this white space. And that's why. Yeah, I think the footer is adding white space. And that's why it's happening. So I'm going to have to come back to this later on and fix it. But not a big deal. So when we add a new section inside here, this section is going to have an H1. So let's call it H1. Put it in the middle. And this is going to be popular products. Now, the reason I'm adding everything in sections, as I mentioned earlier, we do need to look into the document outline. And what you can do is if you go to a group, you can actually tell it what that group is. If you scroll down here at advanced, you can actually say, do you want this to be a div? Do you want this to be a section, article, and so on? So for example, this could be a section. And the same as this one here, this can be a its own section. And now the details thing should work a little bit better also the other reason i'm adding them in sections in groups sorry is because i can add custom padding at the top so for example i'm gonna unlink this and add a lot of padding at the top maybe even seven and maybe seven for the bottom as well and leave it as this the next part is to add a little bit of text copy and paste a little bit of text and the same i've used the trick where i press shift and enter and that puts it on another line without creating a, an extra paragraph put this in the middle and that's going to be looking good one thing that i wish i had is a little bit of maybe bigger line height to the uh, headings or a little bit of margin but what we can do for now is go to dimensions trigger margin on and then for example unlink this and just put margin at the bottom like so and that should do the job if i refresh I should already look good. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but you get the point. Uh, you can always adjust it to your liking. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create another group inside this group. So let's go and do that. Group, 
And inside this group is where I'm going to be adding some of the WooCommerce uh, blocks. So what we can do, let's have a look super quickly at what we have in our disposal. If you go to blocks and scroll down to the bottom, you see that we have a lot of choice. So for example, because we're doing popular products, I can choose best selling products in here and just drag this inside the container. If I can, maybe not. Yep, that's working. And again, I'm gonna give this paragraph here, I'm gonna give it a little bit of margin. So margin, and then I'm gonna say margin at the bottom to be something like six. And now if you click on the best uh, setting products, from here we can adjust them. For example, let's say I want four columns. Uh, we have four columns and maybe because I don't, I didn't add enough products in here, we're getting one left out on its own. Just for the demo, maybe I can just remove this to one row and that will fix our problem. And this is already looking super nice. As you can see, we, you have a lot of options in here, such as the product image. You can untoggle this. Uh, you can untoggle the product title, uh, the product price, product rating, and so on. Maybe product rating is one that you don't want. Uh, currently, they don't have any ratings. Otherwise, they will pop up in here. These are things that you can adjust. So update this. And, and essentially, the latest product is going to be very, very similar to this. So I could potentially make a template of this or just duplicate. I'm going to duplicate it. And what I'm going to do is put latest products instead. Products. And uh, instead of best selling products, let's have a look at what do we have. Remove that. I'm going to go to blocks, patterns, uh, no, blocks, sorry, and scroll down to the bottom. And then they've called the newest product. So I'm going to click on newest product. And then I hope that this is in the container. Let's have a look super quickly. We have group. No, it's not. Let's dream inside the group. Okay. And uh, let's just make sure that this is in the group as well. And we're good to go. Okay. This is looking cool. Again, we're going to have to adjust this the way we want. So I'm going to say four columns, even five you might want, uh, maybe it's too small. Four columns and one row will be absolutely fine. Then this is a pretty cool, actually. Um, this is a pretty cool option, actually. It's going to align all the buttons in at the bottom. So it gonna, it's going to look a lot more uniformed. And maybe I can do this for this one as well. Let's do it. Between those two blocks, the popular and the latest, I want to add a separator with the categories. So exactly the same way, I'm going to create a new group and click on the group. Inside this group, let me just find it. Uh, yeah, I need to get it. Nope. It's hard. And I need to click down, down. Yep, that's where I want it. So let's change this group color, background color, to be... Uh, think uh, and I think that we are uh, okay it looked like it bugged out but if I click on this group here and click on the background and then let's select the dark green uh, we should have a nice separator in here I'm thinking of creating two columns so column here uh, this one is going to be 3366 so we're going to split it this way what I'm going to do is add a block and the block is called featured category from WooCommerce, like so. And then from here, I can select the category that I want. Let's start with the first one. It doesn't really matter. And as you can see, we can modify them the way we want. Let's say like that. And I can do the same one in here, featured category like so. Select the second one. And then here it is. I'm not sure how big to make them, maybe a little bit bigger than this. One thing that it would be nice to have is the height. How big they are because I can't really see, so I'm kind of having to guess. Between the columns, we can definitely add a little bit of block spacing. So let's have a look. It doesn't seem to be doing much, which is great. Let's have a look. Uh, no, it's working, so that's good. Maybe it just needs to reload. So it, it is a little bit buggy, but if I click also on the group, let's give it a little bit of padding. So let's go and say this is a section and this section needs to have a little bit at the top, maybe seven, bottom 
seven, and that should look a lot better. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening here, but we can fix that. So for the columns, I don't know where this background is coming from. Let's refresh this just so we can see whether we can fix the problem. And what I'm thinking is that the background colors are not working. So if you click on one of them featured sections, you can repeat, you can click on the background to cover. And I'm going to do the same to this one here. And let's see whether I click on the column, block spacing, it doesn't seem to be doing much. Maybe it's just buggy. Hmm. I believe that there is a bug in this um, because Originally, it did work on my original design. Let's change this to the lighter color to make it a little bit more vibrant. The other thing that I was going to do is inside here, create a new column. Uh, this column is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go with 50 50. And then I'm going to say featured category in here. And then this is going to be the roses, for example. Done. Uh, we can cover this and make or make it a little bit smaller. Copy this, do another featured category in here. Then we can go for this one here maybe. And just make it smaller. Okay, I'm having to guess here. But I should work. Yep, that needs to be set to cover. Uh, and that's probably just one pixel off. Yeah. Okay. That's actually, that actually ended up looking okay. It does need a little bit of adjustment, to be honest. Maybe the background color here, if you click on it, and if you go here for the color, maybe you can have a more vibrant course. You need to make sure that the text is readable. So um, let's have a look at this. Maybe not. Let me try one more time about the columns. Maybe let's have a look. If I click on the columns outside here, and if I say, of course, padding is going to work. But I don't want padding. I actually want the I actually want the block spacing. So I'm gonna try one more time. Oh, okay, this worked. So we have block spacing of four, and let's do the same for the other one. Maybe I wasn't selecting the right element. I'm gonna select this one here, and then let's say block spacing, and then we can do four. Oh, to be honest, for this we could do a padding at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is unlink it and do put in at the bottom of four. Okay, that's not so bad. And this should be all responsive. So if I go inspect, let me move this to the right side so you can see. And then if I go down, this is all responsive. So not so bad. So that's pretty much our homepage. As you can see, you can build pages super quickly now that I have everything set up. It's not so bad. If we were to add a product to the card, you will see that this adds the product here. And if I add one more, let's say this one here. And if I go up, you will see that we are adding the items in here. All right. And if I click on the basket here, as you can see, it comes up. All right, and if I click on the basket now, you will see that we have a beautiful card in here with all the items. We can remove them like so. We can go to the checkout, view my card, and so on. Which leads me to the next bit. Now, of course, there are going to be little things that you're going to have to fix. Let's go to a product super quickly and see how that looks. There will be things like this that will need to be fixed a little bit. For example, I mean, that doesn't look bad at all, but if you wish to work on this here and make and fix the spacing, at least what you can do is go to edit site, go to the WordPress logo, then template, and then find the WooCommerce. So I believe this is going to be single product here. Click on it. And now you can do whatever you like. For example, this, uh, this is already in a group, which is awesome actually. And then on this group, we can give it a little bit of padding. At the top, for example, I don't know, five, and let's say the bottom five. Save this, and just like this, if I refresh, you will see that we fixed a little bit. You have to explore all of the options. I didn't add any descriptions, and that's why. And also, if you edit a product and add a gallery, 
let's say I add a few images to this. I'm going to select this too, add them to the gallery, update. Let's say we add a little bit of a description as well, like so, update it. Let's go back to the product. And as you can see, we have this beautiful image that you can uh, zoom in and have a look into. Uh, you can look into the other ones. I definitely didn't make them all the same, optimize them, but that's pretty cool. The description is here as well. So as you can see, this is using the classic template, which renders the classic WooCommerce PHP, and there is no options for this one, but uh, you're gonna have to uh, have a look at the other, but you're gonna have to have a look at the other blocks and see what you can add, remove, and so on. The other thing that I was gonna do is to show you uh, the search is also working. So if I was to search for uh, rose, let's say, and you will see that it goes straight to red rose. And I believe this is because I don't, I only have one product and that's why it's opening straight away, which is pretty cool. Let's have a look at what else do we need. And let me show you the last thing that I'm going to do is do one of those pages and they're all going to be pretty much the same. So if I go to all products here, if I edit the page, all I need to do is create a group just so everything is in the middle. And then inside this group is where I can add the blocks that I want. So this is going to be, so if you go to blocks and then we can have a look at all products, click on this, and this is going to add all the, all of the products, make sure that they're inside in the group. So they're contained. And of course you can do the columns again. Maybe you can have them bigger in here, smaller, whatever you wish, uh, rows, a line block to the bottom, like before, show sort, drop down latest, you can update this. And this will be a very basic page that we just done. So if I go back to all products, you'll see that we're getting a very basic page. Of course, I need to put the button at the top to make it look nice. Uh, popularity, yep, that's all looking good. And you can do exactly the same thing for the new products, uh, special offers and the pages that you need. All right, one more thing that I wanted to show you is that if you go to edit site and click on the WordPress logo, go to template parts. You can actually copy the code from your template in here. Let's say the header, uh, click on this here, click on this here, copy the block. And now you can insert this block into your parts. Let's say you want a uh, header.html. And now you can paste the code inside here. And if you give this theme to somebody else, they will have the same header, as long as you, of course, give them the styles as well, because we did do some customizations to this one. And now if I was to go back to template parts, you should be able to use this header from here. Let's see whether uh, it's all working, by the way. And yeah, that's all working. And one more thing that I wanted to show you is, for example, if you're giving this to clients, you might want to lock some of the sections. So if I edit page, and if I click on this section here, for example, what you can do is you can click on the three dots here, and you can lock it. So now you can choose to lock all, or you can choose to prevent removal and so on. So for example, if I lock it all, as you can see now, you won't be able to actually delete it. I'm pressing delete now and you won't be able to delete it, but the clients will be able to update this, which is awesome. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And of course we can unlock it from here and so on. And we can do the same for each block, by the way, you can click on it and then you can lock it from here and then you can choose what you want to lock and so on. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to quickly modify some of the WooCommerce stuff before we finish. I'm only going to do some quick style change here and that's it. If you remember early in this tutorial, I created a variable with rounded corners. So if I go to body and then let's say rounded, I can find it somewhere around here. But in this tutorial, I created this, which can be modified from the actual theme.json file globally. And what you can do is in your styles.css, you can create a global style. So let's say round the corners. And now you can do overflow hidden just in case. And then you can do border radius and we can use that variable. So var, and we'll put the variable in here. And now every time we put this class name to something, it's going to get the global rounded corners. So what I mean by this is let me copy it, save this. And then if I go to the homepage and let's say I wanted to modify them, I can click on one, 
go here, advanced, add around the corners. You won't be able to see them in the edits, unfortunately. Save this, go to the homepage, refresh, and as you can see, they're now working. I had to do Control Shift and R. They're now working. And I can do the same thing for the images here. So what I'm going to do is copy a class name, uh, copy this comment, WooCommerce mod, and the class name for the thumbnails we can inspect from here. And we can see that we have the attachment WooCommerce thumbnail and then size WooCommerce thumbnail. Might do the job, so I'm going to copy this, paste it inside here. And because I want to make it very specific, I can do dots between them. And inside here is where I can add the border radius and the overflow hidden. So save this, refresh. And as you can see, the border radius is working on everything globally. So if I was to go to the team.json file right now, super quickly, and find the custom variables here under settings custom. Now I can change this to four, something ridiculous and refresh and you will see that everything is now changed. So this is how you can do that. Of course, I'm gonna leave it as one. And the last thing that I'm gonna show you super quickly is how you can create different styles. So for example, I'm not gonna do much in here, but for example, what I'm gonna do is copy this and create a new file inside styles. And I'm not sure what to call this, maybe a light green dot JSON. And inside here, I can paste pretty much everything and I can modify whatever I want. If I want to change the font, I can change them. If I want to change the colors, I can change them. And what I'm going to show you, and let's say that we wanted to modify the original colors. Uh, what I'm going to do super quickly is just make up something. So this is going to be So this can be like that. And I don't know. I don't know what else to change. Maybe the lime green can change as well to a darker green and so on. You get the point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. This is a primary color and I'm going to change it inside here. So we search for primary, change it inside here. Of course, you can change everything if you wish. And let's change this one as well. So this is the secondary one. And this is the secondary here. So I'll save this. All right. Let's change the name as well. So this is going to be light green and we save everything else as it is. And in fact, you can even make this one smaller for some reason if you wish to. Let's say we want to make it a little bit smaller like so. Why not? Save this and then let's go back. And now if you go to the site editor, you should be able to change the theme with one click. So here we have this uh, icons of styles. If I click on it, then we can click browse styles. And now, as you can see, we have two styles, the default one and the light green one. If I click on the light green, you will see that everything is changing. I mean, obviously I didn't plan this, so it might look a little bit odd, but if I save it and go back to the website, just so we can see what's going on, it might look a little bit ugly, but not so bad. So just like that, you can change everything. You can literally change the uh, fonts if you wish, I've replaced them with other fonts just so you have different styles, but that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that you like this tutorial. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video and leave a comment below. Tell me what you think of the full site editing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.